Y dice, ok, mira, culela. Hello, what's wrong, Uncle Beta? I was Ari. I was Ari. I was Ari, Beta. I was Ari, Beta. I was Ari, Yes, ma'am, we can yes. hear you. Okay, well. Yes. So today's lecture topic is the chronic pelvic pain. Chronic pelvic pain. So here the pelvic pain are the various structure that is lying in the pelvis. So how we differentiate between the gynecological pain then other pains. Other pains like there is a urinary pain or there is a GIT pain or the muscular pain or there is a skeletal pain. So we have to differentiate and treat because the chronic pelvic pain's prevalence in the female population is very much high. So we can label or define this chronic pelvic pain is the pain of apparent pelvic origin that has been present most of the time for the past six months. So whenever the woman is suffering from six months of the pain, then they must be treated. And by treatment is by we giving to diagnose. So it's very difficult to diagnose that what type of the pain and there's a different gynecological pains, different way of, so we have to differentiate it. Then difficult to treat because when they, anything is become chronic, it's difficult to treat. And when this sometimes this chronic pain is due to difficult in treatment because of that there's an advancement of the lesion and there's an addition or all this formation and the advanced disease stage is reaching so it's difficult to treat and difficult to cure so one is the counseling another is the treatment and then the cure cure and then to re-establish is the normal phase so Frustration for the patient and the physician also. That patients is the confidence lose on the doctors and so doctors also worry about the patient. So all these things comes when there's a difficult to diagnose, difficult to treat, difficult to cure. Incidence is the effect 15 to 20% of the women of the reproductive age group. And account of for 20% of all the laparoscopic surgeries because today the laparoscopic surgeries are increasing in number, so they have this incidence. Account for 12 to 16% of all the hysterectomies patients. Associated medical costs because they have the repeated treatment, repeated visit doctor, repeated medicine, different taken, so there's a cost is very much. Demography is the age, race, ethnicity, education, socioeconomic status do not differ between those with or without care of chronic pelvic pain. High incidence in the single, separated or divorced woman because they are the socially, they are deported and all these situations, they have the more. 40 to 50% of the women have history of abuse. So etiology is goes that woman's gynecological reason. So gynecological reasons may be related to the vagina, vagina infection, 
may be related to the cervix, cervicitis, or there's the other infection, uterus, endometritis, or pregnancy. So here you can divide the obstetrical and the gynecological causes. So if you're taking obstetrical, the molar pregnancy, or there is a, a miscarriage, abortion, or preterm labor, all these, they have the pain, obstetrical reason. The gynecological reason, so they have the infection, or tumors, benign or malignant, all these situations are endometriosis, ovaries, ovarian pathology, fallopian tubes pathology, adenics or pathology. So all these encounter in the gynecological reason. Gastrointestinal reasons are the GIT related, all these, they have the chronic constipation, or there is a colitis, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, or other Crohn's celiac disease, or other any irritable bowel syndrome, or other uh, this infectious disease, or malignancy, benign or malignant tumors, all these encounter. Urological. Urological reasons are that kidney, there's a, especially in the ureters, uh, there is a stone in the ureters and the cystitis. And uh, they, because the woman, there's a frequency of the cystitis is common because small size of the urethra. So they have the uh, urethral infection, urethritis, because there is a vaginal infection. So they have the more frequently infected with the urethra, so urethritis and the ascending infection. So, and even there's a tumor in the uh, uterus, so they can obstruct outflow obstruct of the urine. So there's also they cause the impact over this. Musculoskeletal, so muscles, there's a hysterectal fossa, there's a uh, abscess formation, or there's any muscles infections, or there's any joint lesions or joint infections. So they have the involvement. Then psychological, psychological impact also, that there is a thinking, there's a socially, they are the disturbed woman and all these have the, because the capacity of pain, it is different, person's different. Sometimes they are chronically, they're supposed to, and they feel that. But sometimes they even have the small minute pain, they are feeling more. Etiology are the, database you diagnose distribution into the gastrointestinal reason is the 37.7 percent urinary related is the 30.8 percent and the gynecological is the 20.2 percent so the 25 to 50 percent of women had more than one diagnosis severity and the consistency of the pain increase with the multi-system symptoms most common diagnosis is the endometriosis, adhesive disease, then like pelvic inflammatory disease, inflammation, adhesion formation, irritable bowel syndrome, and there is an interstitial cystitis. So diagnosis obtaining a complete detailed history is the most important key to formulating the diagnosis. In the history, you have to bio data, bio data in which the most important age, in which age category she is presenting pain. So according to that age group, most common the prevalence or incidence of the reason for the diagnosis. So we have to reach at that point. Second, that we have to, in the bio data, the parity. So parity is the how many para to according to their situation, which more frequently in the nulliparous reason and in the multiparous reason. So you can, you are reaching the diagnosis. Then presenting complaint detail and the she is how much time that take the treatment and for what type of the treatment. She has attained the sexually transmitted disease infection clinics or she has the repeated vagina discharge or there's chronic infection or she has the multiple her profession profession which is they there's a sometime prostitute they have the multiple partners or they have the infection pelvic inflammatory disease incidence or there's hygiene of the woman so uh, in the history you have to take the detail then there's a uh, past surgical history. Past surgical, she had the previously treated for the endometriosis, endometrioma, or she had the, some surgeries, repeated surgery that is called the additions formation. Our women have that. They have any surgeries that are laparoscopic or there's a conventional laparotomies. So you have to come to diagnosis that with her detailed history. Then comes the examinations. 
सो आप टेनिंग द हिस्ट्री हिस्ट्री में ड्यूरेशन एंड देन यू टेक द डिटेल ऑफ द हिस्ट्री ऑफ द पेन आल्सो सो द पेन ड्यूरेशन ऑफ द पेन नेचर ऑफ द पेन इज दैट इज अ शार्प स्ट्रेबिंग थ्रोबिंग एकिंग डल स्पेसिफिक लोकेशन ऑफ द पेन एसोसिएटेड विद द रेडिएशन टू अदर एरियाज मॉडिफाइंग फैक्टर थिंग्स दैट मेक्स वर्स और बेटर so timing of the pain intermittent constant temporal relation with menses or it's a menses menses say you can categorize according that it's a starting before the menses and as the bleeding established the pain is relieved means primary or there is a congestive type that is the as the menses start there is a congestive type the pain they have or there is a endometriosis that the end of the menstruation severity is increasing so it's a relation according to that or with the intercourse they have the pain relation or they is a aggravating factor or relieving factor and the detailed medical surgical history specifying the abdominal pelvic and back surgery use the review of the system to obtain the focused detailed history of the organ system involved in the differential diagnosis so obtaining the history the gynecological review of the system associated with the menses either the pain with the associated with the menses so categorize the which factor are causing the pain with the as menses like pelvic inflammatory disease endometriosis are they have the pelvic inflammatory disease so have this congestive type are there's a repeated surgery tubal ligation they have congestive type are there's endometriosis end of menstruation or primary dysmenorrhea is the early age adolescent Association with the sexual activity means there is a either the endometriosis or there is an infection. So specify the superficial or there is a deep. So according to that situation, you can categorize. Are there is um, no sexual partner or or practices? Are there is a symptom or women who are sexually not active? So that categorize also you can differentiate pain with this uh, different. So there is a sometimes there is a mass in the pelvic. So there is vaginal dryness, atrophy means menopause woman. Are other changes with the menses? Use of the contraception, detailed childbirth history. There's a sometimes there's a uterovaginal prolapse. Even there's not obvious second or third category. The even mild category they are causing pain because of the dragging of the uterosacral ligaments where the nerves are present. So they cause the pain and dragging pain. So they when you are doing the pastry test, you put the ring pastry. The pain really means that. that pain is due to this prolapse so treat according to their situation the history of the pelvic infection repeated she has the vagina discharge or pap smear previously taken history of the gynecological surgery or other problems so you are review according to her gynecological review so gastrointestinal review is that regularly she have the bowel movement means there is constipation or she have the repeated they have loose motions or diarrhea or constipation or flatus really with a defecation pain or history of the hemorrhoids fissures polyps and the blood in the stool smellina mucus or nausea emesis or change in the appetite abdominal bloating or weight loss urological review of the system pain with the urination history of the frequent recurrent urinary tract if there is infections hematuria symptoms of the urgency urinary incontinence difficulty voiding history of the necrolithiasis musculoskeletal review of the system history of the trauma association with the back pain other chronic pain problems association with the position or activity psychological review of the system history of the verbal physical sexual abuse or there's a diagnosis of the psychiatric disease or onset association with the life stressors exacerbation association with the life stressors familial or spousal support <laughs> the physical examinations are evaluate each area individually so that we have to examine <clears throat> physical examination is a general physical assessment you have to look for the her orientation with the time and the space then you look for that her the height weight how is the oriented how is the psychologically she is the disturb you can assess on the with the talking and then you assess that her she how is the walking her how is the gait because when there's a gait disturb means that the musculoskeletal problems may be present <clears throat> 
Then your comes the other examination like the pulse, blood pressure, temperature, all these things you have to observe. Then you come to the systemic and the specific examination. A specific examination, anterior abdominal wall. You look for the abdomen and the anterior abdominal wall. Obvious abdominal is the under inspection. There is any bulging or any boil or any tenderness or any redness. You look for that or any scar. Then you have to any on the abdominal wall there is any boil or any other lesion so you can feel that and see the obvious present or on the palpation there's any mass is the feel then pelvic flow and then you have to palpate and the percussion all these things you look for that and then comes the pelvic floor muscles pelvic floor muscles you have to do look for that with the vagina examination also tenderness and the moving of the her lower limbs they have she fe feeling the pain <coughs> vulva there's a vulva is you look for the infection any there's present or this similar with the discharge vagina also you look for the discharge then urethra you have to look for that then cervix cervix you have to do the uh, speculum examination similar with the discharge or any polyp or any other thing you can visualize visra you on the digital vaginal examination you look for uh, you palpate the uterus adenexa bladder on the adenexa you look for the ovarian tumor and the uterus you see the alignment of the uterus that any irregularity or any fiber in the uterus or in the adenexa pathology or there's the ovarian rectum is rectum you look for the rectum is loaded she has the constipation or rectum you feeling any mass bulge in the uh, doing the vagina examination a bulge that is post rectum maybe there's a uh, rectal any mass then rectal vagina examination so here the per rectal examination you do and you exclude the any mass in the rectum present or not sometimes we have associated when the index finger pass into the vagina and the middle finger into the rectum and then feel the any mass in between the in this part in the rectal vagina wall if there is any mass is present or not and sometimes there is a malignancy of the cervix so we do the rectal uh, examination so to you see the free of the rectal mucosa coccyx coccyx mobile or not then you also see for that and there's a coccydine is also caused the pain there's a low uh, low back pain spines and the posture and the gait so abdominal examination alone is the not the sufficient for that so you have to evaluate evaluation tools Diagnosis is the basic testing and then specific testing. Basic testing is that every woman is in the gynecological clinic, you must do the pap smear because the pap smear in the reproductive age group is the more common and there the, is also a screening for the CS orbit malignancy and also we see that there's an infection, how much she has the infection and you can look at uh, see the categories how is the severity of the condition then gonorrhea and the chlamydia infection that is a sexually active woman has the, both these infections common and they also cause the pelvic inflammatory disease so you look and the testing for that so pcr for the chlamydia and the gonorrhea testing you have to do the weight mount that is the trichomoniasis you have to look for the vaginal discharge test and also urine analysis urine culture because the cystic is more common in the woman and the pregnancy test you have to exclude the pregnancy and the complete blood count with the differential there all these and the esr so ultrasound is very important that visualize that any uterine lesion any ovarian pathology any adenexal pathology you and sometimes there's a small polyp in the uterus that is this endometrial you have to exclude and all these have lesion you have to exclude with this pelvic ultrasound specialized testing mri ct scan endometrial biopsy you have to look for there's any bleeding she have the woman bleeding so these are be sometimes with the pen is present so you can exclude the endometrial carcinoma laparoscopy and sometimes there is a tuberculosis of the um, lower genital tract or there is a pelvic 
tuberculosis. So we do the endometrial biopsy. Laparoscopy, cystoscopy. Laparoscopy, we have to direct visualize in the abdominal cavities uh, to look for the pathology. Pathology and the cystoscopy, you have to look for the bladder, bladder lesions, urodynamic studies. So we are with this urodynamic testing, you look for that and urinary play, uh, problems. Urine, cytology, microscopy, and the colonoscopy, you visualize the colon with this endoscope and the electrophysiological studies. So that electromyography, you look for the musculoskeletal problems mm -hmm. and you visualize. Referral to a specialist, if you found any specialty, so you have to refer on their categories. So differential diagnosis for chronic pelvic pain is extensive. Challenges the gynecologist to think outside the uterus and diagnosis evolution treatment plans should align with the patient's positive and the negative from the history, physical, and often required as interdisciplinary approach. So differential diagnosis, gynecological condition that may cause or exacerbate chronic pelvic pain. So you can get a breast level A, level B, level C. Level A, endometriosis, gynecological malignancy, ovarian retention syndrome, ovarian remnant syndrome, pelvic congestion syndrome, pelvic inflammatory syndrome, and there is a tuberculosis salpingitis. So this ovarian remnant syndrome, ovarian retention syndrome, these are the condition when you are doing the hysterectomy with bilateral salpingitis in case of the woman who had the severe pelvic addition, or woman who had the repeated surgery that is addition, or pelvic inflammatory disease cause addition, or endometriosis. In that case, the ovary sometimes hold totally as not removed so there's a, some tissues remain and they cause the pain pain and that is the pelvic inflammatory diseases that is also they have the inflammation and the tuberculosis the level b additions and the benign cystic mesothelioma leomyometa and the post operative peritoneal cyst Level C, adenomyosis, dysmenorrhea, neuro, non-endometriotic adenexal cyst, cervical stenosis, chronic atopic pregnancy, chronic endometritis, endometrial cervical polyp, endosalpings, intrauterine contraceptive device, ovarian ovulatory pain, residual accessory ovary are symptoms of the pelvic pain, prolapse. So then again, gynecological you categorize is the cyclical pain or non-cyclical. The cyclical is the endometriosis, adenomyosis, primary dysmenorrhea, ovulation pain, middle shimmer pain, cervical stenosis, ovarian remnant syndrome. Non-cyclical, that is the pelvic mass, adhesive disease, pelvic inflammatory disease, tuberculosis, salpingitis, pelvic congestion syndrome, symptomatic pelvic organ prolapse, vaginism, and the pelvic floor pain symptoms. So the cyclical and the, that is the endometriosis, adenomyosis, and the primary dysmenorrhea. And the non-cyclical pelvic inflammatory disease, tuberculosis, salpingitis, and the pelvic congestion syndrome, and the pelvic floor pain symptoms. So these are the treated and that according to situation that endometriosis is the which category, the levels you see the scoring system. <clears throat> the early stage you have to treat easily, the latest are difficult. While adenomyosis, that is the endometriosis interna, that is usually multiparous woman, family completed, so that you have to treat according to we have to, these are the usually at the perimenopausal age group. Primary dysmenorrhea, these are younger adolescents, so you have to psychological support and the symptomatic treatment you can treat. While this ovulation pain or metastomers is not so much by the cervical stenosis required, there's a, a cervical dilatation and the ovarian remnant syndrome, that is the ovarian tissue sometimes remain there, so GNRH analog treatment, or you have to the second surgery and then remove that residual. While other these conditions, pelvic condition, tuberculosis, are these, these are the requiring the stectomy. 
endometriosis already we discussed in the previous lectures the presence of the endometrial tissue outside the uterine cavity usually found in the dependent areas of the pelvis most commonly in the ovaries posterior called the sac uterosacral ligament may be at distant sites such as the bowel bladder lining and the skin and the pleura etiology not well understood retrograde menstruation lymphatic hemorrhagic spread of the menstrual tissue metaplasia of the cilomic epithelium or immunological dysfunction so prevalence is typically 25-35 years of age, 45% approximately, and you can undergo in the woman laparoscopy, and the diagnosis is approximately 30% of women undergoing laparoscopy and with the primary complaint of the chronic pelvic pain. Found in 38% of women with infertility, family history increased tenfold significant cause of morbidity. The sign symptoms are the dyspnea, dyspareunia, infertility, intermenstrual bleeding, painful defecation, pelvic heaviness, asymptomatic, some physical examination, visible lesion on the cervix vagina, sometimes tender nodule in the cul-de-sac, uterosacral ligament, rectal vagina septum, pain with the uterine movement, tenderness, adenexal masses, endometrioma, fixation of the uterus, rectal masses, or normal findings. So diagnosis can be made on the history, examination, serum, CA-125, CA-125, the cut off level is over 35 international unit, so it's a raised level, but it is also, is, there's no uh, sensitivity, specificity of the leg because that they have the also other the conditions more, is more than hundreds, thousands, then it's U level in the thousands level as a malignant, epithelial ovarian tumor while is the hundred in the thousands or hundreds so it is the more in the case of the ulcerative colitis fibroid and also there's a palpable disease so it's not specific imaging studies lack sufficient to resolve it to detect so with the laparoscopic gold standard so your appearance you can diagnose that and occurred at that same sitting you can treat so these are the laparoscopic appearance. There's a either red, red, pink, clear, white, peritoneal defect, yellow, brown, black, blue. These are the typical of these lesions. So scoring system of this we do in case of the endometriosis, then according to that situation, we treat it. That is the superficial D, superficial D, according to that in the, you look for the right, left side on the endometrioma, how much the lesion, the ovaries, and also in the peritoneum, the lesion size, is the one less than one, one to two, and the more than three centimeter. And also there's a, when adhesion formation, one is the lesion side, another the adhesion. So adhesion is also, you look for that the enclosure, how much is the enclosure, less than half, half to, there's also, it's more than this, and you have to, according to that, you numbering that you do in the tubes and the ovaries. So the staging of the endometriosis are these, uh, when you are doing the scoring, then you categorize to mild, moderate, severe, very severe, or there's a, you can use the mild, moderate, severe, extensive, like this way, label that. So medical treatment, you are knowing that, or a contraceptive, suppress, evolutions, ovulations, and the menstruation, cyclical, and the continuous, and the improvement symptoms in up to 80%. Second line, progestin, GnRH agonist, denazole, different departs and the improved symptoms up to 80%, side effects, hot flushes, vaginal dryness, insomnia, bone loss, irritability, add back, estrogen, progesterone, throat. So, laparoscopic removal of uh, dist uh, destructions. So, treatment by that, you remove that endometriotic spot and you are destroyed. And uh, also, at that moment, you can do the Luna, that is laparoscopic assisted uterus, sacral ligaments, pulgration, that you have to burn that area so pain is severe tissue reduces. And also if there is a laparotomy you are doing, then <coughs> medical treatment failed, then you have to do stick from it. So laparoscopic uterosacral nerve ablation, Luna, that is I told you that involves the transection of the nerve flexes at the base of the cervical are uterosacral ligament junctions. So adenomyosis, that is the presence of the endometrial gland within the myometrium, dysmenorrhea, menorrhagia, enlarged bogey uterus, typically affects women 30 to 40s, diagnosis pathology, MRI, ultrasound, and the treatment is the stectomy.
dysmenorrhea, primary dysmenorrhea, that is the pain associated with the menses that really onset one to three days prior to onset of the menses, last one to three days. Dysfactor nulliparity, young age, heavy menstrual flow, cigarette smoking, crampy pain, lower abdominal pain, nausea, <coughs> emesis, diarrhea, and headache, normal physical examination. Treatment is the non extra anti inflammatory drugs of B, vitamin B6, B1, hormonotherapy, OCP. Pelvic inflammatory disease, that is a description spectrum of the inflammation infection in the upper female genital tract. There's the endometrial. These are the ascending infection. Ascending infection involving the endometrium and the fallopian tubes and the ovaries and the pelvic peritoneum. So, endometritis. Are adenomyometritis, salpingitis, salpingopritis, tubo ovarian abscess formation when there's external infection, TO mass or tubo ovarian abscess formation, and the pelvic peritonitis. Pathophysiology ascending infection of the vaginal cervical microorganisms, chlamydia, gonorrhea in the developed countries, tuberculosis in the developing countries, acute PID, usually polymicrobial infection. Risk factors. Adolescents, multiple sexual partners, greater than two sexual partners in the past four weeks, new partner in the past four weeks, prior history of the pelvic inflammatory disease, prior history of gonorrhea or chlamydia, smoking. Smoking is causing the inflam uh, there's a immune response is changing. That is why the ascending infection is more. None are inconsistent and don't use. Instrumentation of the cervix. <clears throat> Any procedures done over the cervix are the uterine cavity. So the pelvic inflammatory disease, CDC, central disease control diagnosis guideline, minimum criteria one required that is the uterine tenderness, adenexal tenderness, cervical motion tenderness, and no other identifiable cause. Cervical motion tenderness that you move the cervix, then she feel the pain because the adenexal pathology due to this inflammation. Additional criteria for <coughs> diagnosis, oral temperature greater than 101 uh, and uh, Fahrenheit and uh, centigrade you will take the 38. Abnormal cervical or vaginal discharge, presence of increased WBC in the vaginal secretions, elevated ESR or C-reactive proteins. Documentation of the C-reactive proteins you have to look for that and then you have to CT scan and the ultrasound that you visualize the separate pathology on that. So a specific uh, criteria for diagnosis that the pathological evidence of the endometritis, ultrasound MRI showing the hydrosulfates, and also laparoscopic finding inconsistent with the pelvic inflammatory diseases. <clears throat> so there's uh, also you had your treatment is that the inpatient and the outpatient antibiotic regimes and the total therapy for 14 days because whenever the woman is there's the acute inflammatory disease pelvic medic present then you have to must treat it for 14 days first the injectable then you switch on the oral because if you are not treated adequately at that moment, the woman goes into chronic inflammatory disease so our life she is suffer from the pain so multiple inpatient or outpatient antibiotic regime or total therapy for must be 14 days. Securely, infertility, ectopic pregnancy, infertility because there's the adhesion tubes are closed, adhesion formation, so there's a kinking of the tubes and also there's a ovarian, there's an inflammation, so the ova is not properly released and there is a cervix is the environment is also changed so ascending of the sperm or killing of the sperm at the cervix that is the reason for subfertility ectopic pregnancy because there is an inflammation of the uh, fallopian tubes so there is a change in the ciliary movement of the fallopian tubes and so that is also called subfertility and these are the ectopic because the tubes are when obstructing when there's a zygote is found that is the larger size so which cannot move the fallopian tubes and they implant in the fallopian tubes and also the environment of the change in the fallopian tubes so there's a zygote is implanted at that site chronic pelvic pain occurs in the 18 to 35 percent 35 percent of women 
who developed PID may be due to inflammatory process with the development of the pelvic adhesions. Pelvic condition syndrome, which is a retrograde flow through the incompetent valves, venous valves, can cause tortuous congested pelvic and the ovarian vein porosity. Etiology is unknown. Diagnosis is the pelvic venography, CT scan or MRI, ultrasound or laparoscopy. So symptoms are the pelvic ache, heaviness, and it may worsen premenstrually after prolonged sitting or standing or following intercourse. Treatment, progestin, GnRH agonist, ovarian vein embolization or ligation, or finally is the hysterectomy with bilateral sulfendioprectomy. Pelvic floor pain syndrome, that is the description spasm or strain of the pelvic floor muscle, the levoturinary muscle, coccygeous muscle, piriformis muscles. Symptoms, chronic pelvic pain, pain in the buttocks and the down beak of the leg and the dyspronia. Treatment, biofeedback, pelvic floor physical therapy, Dean Smith's trans, cutaneous electrical nerve stimulation units, anti anxiolytic therapy, cooperation from the sexual partner. So the differential diagnosis of the urological condition that may cause or exacerbate the chronic pelvic pain, level A, level B, level C. So level A is the bladder carcinoma, interstitial cystitis, radiation cystitis, urethral syndrome, level B is the detrusor disc synergia, urethral diverticulum, and the level C chronic urinary tract infection, recurrent acute cystitis, recurrent acute urethritis, stone urolithiasis, or urethrocarantis. So interstitial cystitis, that is the, uh, these are the when uh, inflammation and this uh, typical feature that is not treated other causes. So various treatment, various treatment, which is we have already discussed in the bladder and then again is also with the urological section you have to treat it. So these are the chronic inflammatory condition of the bladder. And the loss of the mucosal surface protection of the bladder and the thereby increased bladder permeability because these are the in the urine that is the irritative motive. So when there's a is loss is the protective layer, so they cause the inflammation in these conditions. So symptoms are the urgency, frequency, pain in the wards with the bladder fling, improve with the urination, pain is worse with a certain force, pressure in the bladder, pelvic. Uh, pelvis and the pelvic pain is up to 70% women present, the 38 to 85% present with the chronic pelvic pain. Diagnosis cystoscopy with the bladder distension. When you fill the bladder, so the particular some areas are seen, and then you can diagnose the interstitial cystitis, intravesicular potassium sensitivity tests are presence of the glomerulation, lunar cells are present over that, that is, the reddish points are visible. Treatment, avoidance of the acidic food, beverages, antihistamine, tricyclic antidepressant, ilmiron, and the intravesical therapy, that is the diameter sulfoxide. These are the injections are given. Then irritable bowel syndrome, that is the urological gastrointestinal conditions. There is a level A, there is a colon can a cancer, constipation, and the inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome. There will none level C, colitis, chronic intermittent bowel obstruction, diverticular disease. So here irritable bowel syndrome we discuss. That is usually is occurring in the exams also, various who are psychologically very much conscious. So there's the irritable bowel syndrome that is the chron chronic relapsing pattern of the abdominal pelvic pain and the bowel dysfunction with the diarrhea and the constipation prevalence affect 12% of the US population, 2.1% prevalence in the woman and the men. So women have more common, 2%, two is more. Then relation the woman, uh, men is the one, P cage is the 30 to 40s, rare on the woman over 50 associated with the elevated stress level. So it is the stress level is more than they have the more symptoms. Uh, the symptoms, diarrhea, constipation, bloating, mucus, stool, the symptom of the rebound found in 58% women with this have the chronic stress, they have this. So they have the uh, room 
two criteria for irritable bowel syndrome at least 12 weeks need to be consecutive in the preceding 12 month abdominal discomfort or pain has the two to three relief with the defecation onset associated with the change in the frequency of the stool onset associated with the change in the stool form or appearance the following symptoms is, are not essential to the diagnosis but their presence increase the diagnostic confidence and may be used to identify subgroups of the irritable bowel syndrome abdominal uh, abnormal stool frequency more than three per day and the abnormal stool form like lumpy hard loose watery 90 25 percent abdominal stool passage abnormal stool passage more than 25 percent defecation and the passage of mucus is more than 25 percent and the blotting feeling of the abdominal distension more than 25 percent so the differential musculoskeletal conditions that is the level a b c so level a abdominal wall myofascial pain like trigger pain chronic back pain poor posture fibromyalgia neurologic pelvic nerves pelvic floor myalgia peripartum pelvic pain syndrome level b herniated disc lower back pain nucleus of spinal cord are second now and the level c lumbar spine compression regenerative joint disease hernia muscular strain sprain the rectus tendon strain and spondylysis the psychological that is the levels are divided level a b c so that is the a level abdominal cutaneous nerve entrapment or surgical there's a scars or there's a depression or somatization disorders level b celiac disease neurological dysfunctions porphyria shingles or sleep disturbance so uh, shingles these are the herpes zoster that is the small shingles are formed and that is cause a very much severe burning pain the level c that is the abdominal epilepsy abdominal migraine bipolar personality disorder or familial mediterranean fever somatization disorders that is the 40 to 50 percent women with that have the history of the abuse and the psychosomatic uh, factor play in the dominant role that is the psychotropic that is the medication various type of the uh, most of the psychotherapy is given and the primary original therapy and the approach patient is the gentle non-judgmental manner do not want to imply that the pain is all in her head so you have to give them psychological support and the treat conclusion is that chronic pelvic pain requires patience understanding collaboration from both patient and the physicians obtaining a thorough history is a key to accurate diagnosis and the effective treatment diagnosis often multifactorial and may affect more than one pelvic organs treatment option for multifactorial medical surgical physical therapy and the cognitive any question unmute Any question? Any question? Any question? But I so much me. Yes or no? Any question? No, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Stop share,